All right, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for your patience. Um, I have a statement I want to read out on Syria. The Secretary General welcomes the Security Council's decision to extend the UN cross-border mechanism in northwest Syria via the Bab al-Hawa border crossing. Cross-border humanitarian assistance remains a lifeline for millions of people in the area and beyond. The reauthorization will ensure humanitarian assistance continues for over 3.4 million people in need, including 1 million children. However, needs continue to outstrip the response. As the Secretary General has highlighted to the Council, with additional crossings and expanded funding, the United Nations could do more to help the rising number of people in need. The UN continues to engage with all parties to also facilitate cross-line convoys. They are critical for the expansion of the overall response as humanitarian needs continue to grow. The Secretary General reiterates his call on all parties to the conflict to ensure humanitarian access to all people in need in accordance with international humanitarian law. I also have a statement on Ethiopia. Uh, the Secretary General and Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed spoke yesterday to discuss the extremely concerning humanitarian situation in the Tigray region of Ethiopia. The Secretary General welcomed the Prime Minister's assurances that the government of Ethiopia will facilitate immediate access to Tigray for humanitarian organizations, as well as the Prime Minister's commitment that essential basic services, including power and communications, will, be, will resume swiftly. The Secretary General also acknowledged the government's pledge to use the ceasefire to facilitate urgent humanitarian assistance, including regular United Nations humanitarian flights into Tigray, as well as support for agricultural activities. The Secretary General reiterates his call that all parties must meet their obligations to protect civilians, provide unimpeded humanitarian access, and to observe international humanitarian law. This morning, the Secretary General spoke virtually to the third G20 meeting of finance ministers and central bank governors, which is being held in Venice in Italy. He told ministers that to restore trust in multilateralism, we need to deliver on vaccines, economic recovery, and climate finance. On the pandemic, the Secretary General reiterated his call for a global vaccine plan to at least double production for vaccines and to ensure equitable distribution using COVAX as the platform. On economic recovery, the Secretary General said that many developing countries are teetering on the verge of debt default. He called on the G20 to expand the debt service suspension initiative and common framework for debt treatment to include vulnerable middle-income countries and small island developing states. And on climate change, he said he was deeply concerned over the lack of progress on public climate financing and once again called on the G20 to mobilize $100 billion annually, as agreed to in 2009. Uh, his full remarks are online. Uh, moving on to Haiti, the special representative of the Secretary General, Helen Lalim, continues to be in contact with Haitian leaders and other interlocutors, stressing the urgent need to reach an inclusive political compromise to maintain stability and to chart the way forward to hate for Haiti. The, that the, excuse me, the solution to Haiti's challenges will come from Haitians themselves. We continue to stand by Haiti and the Haitian people to provide support. Um, and on, uh, also on Haiti, on the humanitarian aspect, uh, our colleagues are telling us that following the assassination of the president, efforts to respond to the recent increase of COVID-19 cases in the country are being put to risk. The situation is also threatening the efforts to provide humanitarian assistance, especially food and water, to people who have been internally displaced due to recent gang attacks. The UN's humanitarian air service flights were canceled on the 7th and 8th of July, and the UN Department of Safety and Security has restricted road movements for UN humanitarian staff. Members of the humanitarian country team are reviewing preparedness and other contingency plan. The International Organization for Migration and other humanitarian colleagues estimate that as July 4th, some 18,000 people were displaced in Port-au-Prince, a greater metropolitan area. Of those, nearly 14,700 were displaced since the beginning of gang clashes in early June. Humanitarian partners are currently drafting a strategy and budget to support efforts. 
And UNICEF said today that 1.5 million children in Haiti, which represents nearly a third of all children in the country, are in urgent need of emergency relief due to the rising violence, constrained access to clean water, health, and nutrition, disrupted, by, uh, disrupted education and protection services in times of COVID, as well as hurricanes. Uh, UNICEF warned that this is the world's uh, worst humanitarian crisis, the, excuse me, the, UNICEF warns that this is the worst humanitarian crisis Haiti has faced over the past few years and that it is deteriorating week after week. Um, there's more online. And turning to Afghanistan, also on UNICEF, they tell us that more than 1.4 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccine arrived today in Afghanistan, donated by the U.S. to COVAX. The doses were delivered through the COVAX facility dose-sharing scheme to the government of Afghanistan. UNICEF noted this is the first of two vaccines consignment to arrive this month, bringing the total number of donations to 3.3 million uh, doses. Uh, also today, WHO warned that humanitarian needs in Afghanistan are enormous and complex. WHO said the worsening security situation has led to a sharp increase in civilian casualties. More online. And in response to questions on recent events in Bolivia, I can tell you that in relation to the legal actions taken against former government officials and authorities in the country, the Secretary General recalls the importance of upholding due process guarantees and full transparency of all legal proceedings. The Secretary General encourages all political and social leaders to continue working together with a strong commitment to democracy, rule of law, respect for human rights, and dialogue, efforting, efforts in addressing current political, economic, and social uh, challenges. Our colleague Lynn Hastings, the resident coordinator for the Occupied Palestinian, uh, the humanitarian coordinator for the R Occupied Palestinian Territory, said she visited Gaza yesterday to see what progress had been made in, uh, nine weeks since the beginning of the hostilities with Israel. Unfortunately, she said since the beginning of the escalation on May 10th, entry into goods through Karim uh, Shalom have been limited to food, medical supplies, fuel, fodder, and a few agricultural inputs and some other items. She called for a return to the regular and predictable of entry into goods, of goods into Gaza. The, we currently estimate that 250,000 people are still without regular access to piped water, and 185,000 are relying on unsafe water sources or paying higher prices for bottled water. Ms. Hastings urged Israel to ease the restriction of movements of goods and people to and from Gaza with the goal of ultimately lifting them. Only by fully lifting the debilitating closures can we hope to sustainably resolve the humanitarian crisis and contribute to longer-term stability, she said. And an update for you uh, from our UN team in uh, Brazil, what they're doing to address the COVID pandemic there. Led by the resident coordinator, Sylvia Rux, they continue to help authorities address the multiple impacts of the pandemic, including by focusing on indigenous people in the Amazon region. UN agencies are helping indigenous communities by increasing access to medical care and mental health support to indigenous communities, migrants, Venezuelan refugees, and host communities. Our colleagues have also delivered personal protective equipment, hygiene kits, fuel, and agricultural tools. UN Women, UN Population Fund, UNHCR launched campaigns in Portuguese, Spanish, and indigenous languages to ensure that women are aware of their rights and services available to them in case the violence against women, uh, as cases of violence against women are on the rise. And this morning at the high polit level political forum of ECOSOC, uh, they addressed, member states addressed two important topics. First, the urgent need to help small island developing states so they may get a path to realize the SDGs. It then turned on to a discussion on how to mobilize science, technology, innovation, and strengthen the science pol policy society interface. This afternoon, the first full week of the forum will conclude by shining a spotlight on the vision and priorities of civil society the private sector and other major groups and stakeholders in realizing the SDGs during the COVID-19 recovery. The session will explore how to advance an inclusive pathway to recovery, as well as possible reforms to strengthen the realization of political and social rights so as not to leave anyone behind. Uh, just the, uh, for the record, you saw that yesterday the council convened for a briefing on the ongoing disagreement involving Egypt, Ethiopia, Sudan, regarding the great Ethiopian Renaissance dam. And they heard from our colleagues, Prophet Onanga Anyanga, the special envoy for the Horn of Africa, 
and uh, Inger, uh, Inger Anderson, the head of the, execu the executive director of UN Environment Program. On Monday, we will be joined virtually by experts from the Food and Agriculture Organization, the World Food Program, um, to launch the flagship report, The State of Food Security and Nutrition in the World 2021, an annual report. Um, also note, uh, from Monday onwards, for a time that I will not disclose, uh, Fahan and uh, Ari and Florencia will alternate in briefing as I will be taking some leave. James. Good, you're getting some leave. Um, yes. So um, I have a question about Syria, but first, thank you for going and getting the draft resolution. And could you please, I, mean, I will try and raise this with the French presidency, but I know it was a last minute yeah. compromise resolution and whatever, but surely in the sake of transparency, journalists need to know what is being voted on before the vote takes place. Some of us were carrying it live on television and not knowing what they were voting on is... So if you could pass that to SCAD and anyone else who, who has influence. Um, the question, you read the statement about the uh, new resolution. Um, so just to be absolutely clear, does the Secretary General think that the one crossing at Bab al Hama is sufficient? Look, I, I, you know, we're, we're tr I'm trying to be as clear as uh, possible. Uh, we very much welcome the resolution. Uh, the fact that um, we have uh, the ability to use that crossing will bring um, uh, will bring relief, uh, even temporary band aids, whatever you want to call it, relief to, to to millions of uh, of people. Um, obviously. Um, there is there's a great demand. Uh, we cannot meet that demand. Um, we've always been clear of what we wanted. It was clearly uh, critically important for us to have cross border uh, uh, cross border access. We continue to have it. Goes without saying. With 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 more, you can service more people. Uh, but we very much welcome um, this uh, res this resolution. And I think we also very much welcome and note the fact that it was adopted unanimously um, and that there were not competing drafts. And I think that sends, we are always heartened when there is a, a unified singular voice from the Security Council as we had today. And another question on the other thing you read out about Tigray. The, the phone call between the Secretary General and Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed um, do you consider those promises he's made of aid access a breakthrough, or are these things that he's promised you before and you've never got? And secondly, did the Secretary General raise the question of Eritrean forces? The permanent representative of Ethiopia a week ago said they'd all left Tigray, and that seems to be contradicted by evidence on the ground. I mean, we've been clear about the need for foreign forces uh, to leave. Uh, the Secretary General has made that clear both publicly and uh, and, and and privately. Um, you know, the, the breakthrough will come when we will have uh, the unimpeded, unhindered humanitarian access that, that we need, uh, which is at this on this very day not... Uh, not the case, as I, as I said. Uh, we are heartened by uh, the pledge made uh, made by the president, uh, but it is clear. But excuse me, thank you, by the prime minister. It is clear that there are a number of, of um, figurative and literal roadblocks that remain uh, for the humanitarian access uh, humanitarian access that we need. But we will be obviously monitoring the situation very closely. Benno, uh, and then Toby. Thank you. I came late. I'm not sure. I hope you didn't talk about that. Um, the Syria resolution is hailed by the US and Russia um, that it could be a possible turning point in their relationships. Does the uh, Secretary General have an opinion or a comment about if that could stretch to other um, things in the Security Council? There is nothing that we like more than close positive and productive cooperation between members of the Security Council, between the permanent members of the Security Council, and between the United States and the Russian Federation. Toby. Thanks, Steph. Where will you be going on vacation, and how much fun do you expect to have? Oh, 
lots of fun, and I expect to drown my phone. <laughs> um, my question is, uh, now the resolution is calling for reporting on cross-line mm -hmm. um, aid deliveries. How, how do you expect to do this? What's, uh, what are you planning in terms of uh, this reporting, and uh, what, what can we expect it to look like? Well, you know, we, we've always talked about the, the importance of cross-line uh, deliveries as well. Uh, we will continue uh, to engage with all the various parties uh, to facilitate uh, the cross-line uh, convoy. The cross-line convoy are really a, a critic, uh, another critical tool that we, that we need to exploit to its f fullest extent uh, to increase the delivery of humanitarian aid. I mean, basically, we will... We have been given an opportunity by uh, the Security Council. Uh, we will ensure that we can we do whatever we humanly can uh, to use these opportunities to expand humanitarian aid. But what does it actually look like? I can't really visualize it. I mean, there are monitors on the 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 front lines there that would be taking tallies, or well, obviously, you know, the, the cross cross line in in any. A conflict area is can be somewhat challenging because it in, involves uh, dealing with parties that are, by very definition, in conflict. So we will do whatever we can to uh, make sure that that is exploited. Uh, Elena, uh, I think you have a question. Hi, Stefan. Thank you. Yeah, one question before you leave for vacation. But I have sent an email just not long ago, so maybe you didn't have time to see it. But it's about um, supposed intervention by the uh, Southern African Development Community in Mozambique, of which um, there is a, a organi organization in Mozambique saying that um, the SADC has informed the Secretary General for the military intervention in Mozambique to start next week. So I wanted to see if that... Yeah, uh, no, it's I, true if you can I, confirm I saw, that. I saw I saw your email uh, a few minutes ago. We've we've asked uh, people who monitor these uh, these things to see if we haven't uh, if we've received it. I, I just don't know off the top of my head. Thank you. Um, just as like, uh, is there any opinion by the Secretary General that the population or is not informed by it, or the the Parliament or the uh, Assembly of Republic is not informed by it? Uh, of it, I mean. I'm sorry, but who, who is not informed? The population in Mozambique is not informed that there can be an intervention. I, I, you know, listen, let let me case. let me look into the issue a little closer before uh, closely before I uh, before I answer. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think we uh, our friend Amy uh, is sitting in back. She will brief. Well, I I have. No, so go ahead, James. They're not going on holiday ahead, that quickly. <laughs> um, um, so um, reports from Afghanistan that the border crossing uh, to Tajikistan and the border crossing with Iran are now under the control of the Taliban. How concerned is the Secretary General of the military progress of the Taliban at a time when it was supposed to be diplomacy to the fore? We continue to be increasingly concerned by uh, the military situation on the ground, the continued fighting. Uh, the military operations would only, in our mind, bring more suffering to the people of, uh, of Afghanistan, and we think it's critically important for all the parties involved to redouble their diplomatic efforts. And we, we are, I've spoken to my colleagues again, we are really working towards a briefing for you for next week, inshallah. Excellent. And on the reopening of the UN, you made a very bold announcement that all staff had to come back to work unless they had a, a discussion mm -hmm. with their managers. Um, I look around the building and it's virtually empty. It's clear that they haven't heeded well, your I, call. I, who am I? <laughs> who am I? Uh, I you know, uh, obviously, they still have a lot of practical... I mean, I, I think, you know... All of us here have been coming uh, back in because we, criti we need to be here to do, uh, to do our jobs. I think uh, a lot of people in, in every industry had, um, had set up a productive way to work productively from home. These things need to be uh, untangled, including issues of childcare and, and or, or care for family. So we expect it. Plus, you do have, this is a summer months, some people will be on leave. 
uh, or will be going on leave. Um, so I think the, the, the numbers will increase gradually. And why on their return not make this a completely COVID-safe building? All of us have our passes reactivated when we prove our proof of, um, um, of vaccination, and then we would we know the building was totally safe and we'd have no one in here who is foolish enough not to have got a vaccine. It's a, uh, it's a valid point. Uh, a, a couple of issues that we obviously have to deal with. Uh, one is questions of medical privacy. One is the fact that some people cannot get vaccines for, for health reasons and that we have to respect um, uh, for medical conditions. The other issues involves uh, member states and diplomats, and that always is a tricky one. Benno. Very last question. Do you actually think about keeping the hybrid briefings for... No, I, I think we will. Ever? I mean, as, as far as uh, I'm concerned, I think that the hybrid model works uh, well. Uh, I think as long as we're safe in this room, I, I think it gives people the opportunity to do more than one thing at, at, uh, at once. It gives a flex. So I have, I have no intention of stopping uh, the hybrid model. I'm always happy to see people in the room. Um, and I, I think we have to be flexible, like work-wise, people can work from home a few days from work. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to keep the, uh, the hybrid model, uh, but I'm always happy to see you in person. Thanks. All right. Uh, Amy, come save me, and I will see you all not soon.